Hi guys, thank you for joining us today. Now in this video, we are continuing on from where we left off, painting this beautiful thing. Load of really simple, nice, easy to use techniques, bags of bold, bright colors. Had a blast making that one. Now, if you haven't seen that video, then go click the link somewhere on the screen, watch it, then come back and carry on watching this one. If you have watched that previous one, well done you. Should we go on and do some painting? I think so. Now, as you will have seen in the first video, on the table we have an array of acrylic paints, some pretty gorgeous colors there. What else have I got? We also talked about some brushes, and I've also got sponges here, just ordinary household sponges. It's important we have some water, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with the cardboard very, very shortly. Okay, so obviously the important thing is to get the paint onto the canvas, not onto ourselves. So I've got my apron on, so make sure you've got some clothing on or something old. And the last thing we need to do before we get going is just cover the table. So I think I should get on with that now. Okay, so we're ready, table's ready. Let's get the canvas on. Now this one is an 80 centimeter square canvas, which is what we're gonna be painting today. In fact, the same size as the one we did in the previous video. This seems to fit the table really well. And next we can just have a very, very quick look at the tools that we're gonna to be using today. Now we are going to be blending this beautiful selection of colors, which is what I've picked out for today's painting. And we're gonna be doing that with card. Yes, you heard me right, not brushes, card. Okay, so the first variation I wanna introduce you to are business cards. Now these are my own, now, these are very good. We're gonna be, well, we use all the tools actually I'm gonna show you now, but business cards are brilliant for what we're about to do. However, I do realize not all of you may have them. So we've got lots of alternatives, uh, cereal boxes, there you go. I'm sure you can probably raid the larder and find a cereal box. So we'll cut some of those up in just a second. I think these were sanding discs. Again, a fairly nice rigid card. That's perfect. And that is what my coffee pods come in. So we can cut that up as well. Now, the other thing is you can also use a rigid plastic. So something like a milk, maybe even a milk carton or something that's you know, quite a hard material. They're really good as well. But there's a few options that you can use. And all we're really looking for is something around about, I don't know what you call that, maybe sort of four inches by about two inches, something like that. So I think we're going with the cereal carton. And let's just cut ourselves a couple of shapes and practice what I preach. So let's do you know, so it's just that one, a couple of different shapes, there we go. The nice thing about a rectangle is that we can start blending with the short edge, which gives us smaller variations. And then we can also blend with the longer edge, which gives us much bigger single blends but we'll have a look at that in a moment so there are tools now these are the first set of colors that i'm going to work with actually put that there so i've got a rose a really deep orange nice zesty lemon yellow and a deep red okay so let's get these over here now let me explain a little bit about acrylic paints here i could potentially put everything all on the canvas at the same time and then start moving it around but actually these have quite a short drying time. So what I'm gonna to do to start with is just work on this small band just in the corner. And these are my four colors. So I'll show you what's gonna happen as soon as I've got them on. And I just wanna pop those into some randomized <laughs> local areas. It doesn't have to be too specific and I'll show you why because this is the whole point of maneuvering them around a little bit. Let's get the red in, that's looking nice. So this is gonna be my, my band of color, which I'm gonna work with initially. Now I can take my time on this because they're not going to dry out too quickly. I'll have plenty of time to manoeuvre them. But if you can imagine if that was covered and you start here, by the time you get to that corner, yeah, it might be a little bit difficult. Okay, so now we've got our first lot of colour on. Let's start moving it around, shall we? So remember what we just cut up. Okay, so there's our cereal carton. There's our business card. And actually what I've also done, because I want to show you, is I folded one of the cereal cut pieces over so it just becomes a little bit more rigid okay so they're the three tools we're going to use let's start blending 
Now, all I'm really doing here, I'm putting some pressure on, not a huge amount, and I'm maneuvering this around just to cover the canvas. And as I hit different colors and then move the card around, I'm taking color from one place and then popping it in another. So there you can see on the back, I've picked up most of the colors. Here it's quite red. So I'm gonna pull in a little accent of that over there. And this is all I'm really doing. I want to, I want to just mix some of these colors, not too much, but I want to introduce this into the corner. This is my really sort of vibrant, warm, colorful corner. As we go along, there we go, a bit dash of lemon there. Let's pop the lemon on the edge. I just really want to go nice and gently across it, paying attention to the corners. And this, see what I mean about flat card? It's brilliant. You literally can do so much with it. Okay, that's good. So that's the business cardy bit done. Now, I don't know if you can see actually over here in the light, you've got control over how thick or thin you want to make this. So if you're fairly light with your touch, then you can keep the volume of paints fairly local. If you press on a lot, and I'm going to demonstrate now, so if I press on a lot, okay, so here we go. So it thins the paint out, but extends how far we can take it. So this is just really just having some fun and you can play around with how much pressure you put on your paint. And then light pressure will give you these nice little scoops and it won't move it very far. It'll just give you these nice little peaks and that's where you can build up some of your texture. Also, I'm using the long side of the card, and don't forget we can use the short side, and all that really does is just give you shorter movements. And we'll do, we'll do that on the next bit of paint, I think. But there we go, that's our first bit of spreading done. So I think we'll pop some more colors on now, shall we? So the next colours, I'm, I'm just going to stick to colours sections of four for now, because they're a lot easier to work with four. I mean, you can work with as many as you want, actually, but I prefer four. That's, that's to me, quite a nice colour to work, uh, amount to work with. OK, so I'm going with a very strong yellow, because I want to try and brighten this up a little bit. And then a nice cadmium red. That's a gorgeous pink, although it says rose on it. And then we're going to start and introduce some of the greens. pick the next four colors out. Great, looking good so far. So the next four we're gonna use is a violet. Ooh, nice. A cadmium yellow. That one is called vermilion. Gorgeous colored orange. And we're gonna start and lighten things up with some white. Right then, I think we'll tackle the next four colours, shall we? So I've got uh, a lightish coloured, uh, orangey kind of yellowy colour. I've got two really, really deep oranges because I want to try and bring out some of the warmth from the original orange that we've got. And I'm going to feature it next to the purple. Okay. Now the other colour, dun dun dun, is the black. Now, depending on what you're doing, you're really quite careful with black. It's a very final colour and it's very easy to put far too much on. So we're only going to put a little uh, sort of droplet of this on and we're just going to work it down the side and through the painting. So let's get these on and see how we get on, right? Okay, now the tension rises. So do, do we go black here and make it very sort of dramatic through the center or do I do it on the side? Ooh, that sort of thing. Right, I think we'll just do it on the side for a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna just do a few key drops. I don't want very much at all. Now compared to the volume we've already put on, that's not a lot. 
Okay, so I've got a fresh piece of card, and at the moment, at the moment, I'm not gonna to touch the black, okay? I'm gonna use a separate card for the black. So let's get the majority of this blended in, and then we'll see what we're gonna do with that one. Right, so let's tackle the black, and then all I really wanna do here is just have a, a suggestion down the side and move a few little elements into the center just to, just to put a bit of drama in there. So let's see how we get on with that, shall we? So using a fresh card, I really do like black and orange as colors to work with. I think they're fantastic. In fact, I do use them a lot in my uh, paintings that you, well, I don't know if you can see them around you, but they're really cool colors to work with. So I've scooped up a tiny little bit of the purple there, and then I just want to bring these very carefully, just down the side. So I'm scooping up and I'm putting back down again. That's all I'm doing, scooping up, putting back down again, and featuring this down the side. And when you do get black into orange, the more you mix, the more brown it will become. So it really just depends on what you are trying to do. Now I wanna keep them separated to a reasonable degree. So I'm not gonna mix them too much and I don't want to go too far over with them. Now you can see just those few drops of black, what that's done to the painting. So really, I mean, again, depending on what you're trying to do, sometimes you just really don't need that much. Now I'm going to turn the card over so I have a clean side, and I'm just going to softly take some of these oranges and just blend them to, into the places where we came from originally. Pretty happy with that so far, and that just leaves the corner left. So let's figure out what we're going to do with that. Right then, so to cover the canvas, these are the last four colours that I'm going to use. So we've got a titanium white, back to the rose, and we've got a mid yellow and a very fresh lemon yellow. So let's pop these into the last corner, shall we? So let's just kind of finish that off. Up the side. Oh, lovely. Really liking that. That's fabulous. And don't worry about the sides because we'll look at the sides in a little while. Okay. <laughs> We've got our canvas covered, ladies and gents. Right, let's put some finishing touches to it, shall we? <laughs> Now to turn our attention to the edges.
And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. One completed painting that I've had a huge amount of fun doing for you today. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe using that button down below. We've got tons of really cool videos on the channel and I'm sure you'll find something that's educational and entertaining. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.